Well, we had a good walkthrough, got through with no injuries in the walkthrough, so we're moving forward. Any, uh, any of you guys that are interested uh, with the softball update, uh, they play tomorrow night at 8.30, so get, I'll try to get you an update Thursday or Friday. You going to be there? Nope. <laughs> Is that it? Uh, Eric Sugarman, obviously our trainer, uh, talked with him, and uh, I think Bob talked with him. So I, I think you're better off talking to him, uh, talking to them, or finding out from them. But I would expect him. His the original plan was for him to come back tonight. Coach, how's Kyle Rudolph doing so far? What are you expecting? I think he, I think Kyle's having a good camp. Uh, you know, the we're doing a lot of things with three wide receivers. Uh, and they're, those guys are getting a lot of attention based on how our coverages are. But uh, I think Kyle's getting to, getting ready to really have a productive season. What's different about his uh, physique? You know, he's talked about his changing his diet and all that kind of stuff. What uh, difference have you noticed in kind of that regard? Well, he's pl- I think he's playing stronger. I think that's helping them. And I think his endurance is better. Uh, so, you know, the routes he's running early in practice, uh, He's not getting his fatigue, and he's running the, the same type of routes late in practice and running them with good speed. You know, we've moved him around a lot, and he's, he's re- very, very smart. He obviously is very experienced, and uh, he's uh, there's, there's some routes he really, really runs well that are underneath routes that uh, I've been very impressed with him. Uh, obviously, he can stretch the field and, and go deep, uh, but I think he's a guy that... Uh, you know, we can use in a lot of different ways. Well, if John Sullivan wasn't here uh, yesterday, I guess they just had their baby today. But... I had the baby, uh, baby boy. I don't think, I haven't heard the name. I don't think it's Norv. Uh, I don't, I'll give the update that we can. But I, I don't know when he's coming back. But this is, it's really, honestly, uh, pretty, pretty uh, good in terms of letting these other guys get some work. Uh, we got to work some other guys in there uh, yesterday, and uh, you know we'll continue to do that. And John is—he, I, I think he's having a great camp. I was going to ask you about Zach Karen. I guess I know it was only one practice, but what did you see from him with that first game? Well, well, Zach's a versatile guy, and he can play. He's played in practice here. He's played <laughs> center and guard, and uh, you know I, I thought he was fine yesterday. What do you feel John's having a good camp so far? I'm sorry. What do you feel Sullivan's having? Uh, he's playing really strong. He's playing really strong and really physical. And, you know, he's been in this system now for a year. And he and, yeah. he and Teddy do a great job of communicating. They communicate uh, in a running game. They communicate in our pass protections. Uh, and he's, um, you know, he's, he's as uh, smart a guy as I've been around. Talk a little bit about Harris needing to work on his pad level since he's taller than most guards. Have you seen the nice adjustment? Yeah, he, he's working hard at it, and that comes from being in pads and practicing the way we're practicing. Uh, you, you all saw it. We had an uh, inside run period uh, with, without the receivers in there, and we, we had, uh, you know, very very physical work on that. Uh, he still, when he's pulling, is playing a little bit too high, but I think, uh, you know, that's a matter of getting reps doing it and time doing it. Yeah, we're. I mean, be honest, like, we're we're a long ways away from that. But uh, you know, my guys who, uh, my experience and guys who know my background, there's there's a. If you have a guy like Adrian, he gets uh, the bulk of the carries, and and whoever's in there is who's ever the next guy up is in there to. to he needs a break. You go in, and and uh, you know, so a guy. The other guy might get four or five carries in a game. Uh, some games he may get none. Would you rather um, rotate on like based on downs, or, or is it, does it make sense to give guys the entire series if you can? And, and... Uh, like I said, you know, uh, I've been I've been in games where we called 12 straight runs and one guy got all all carries. So it just it depends on the game, the situation. A guy breaks off a 40-yard run. Uh, 
you know, and you, you want to give them a break, you, you put someone in for a play. Uh, you know, I think, and then the situation dictates it. And there are certain things on third down that other guys do better than we can utilize them. I think he's really playing well. Yeah, I think he's doing a nice job. And like I've said, uh, uh, both our guards you get uh, real good competitive work because of our defensive tackles, and they're, they're outstanding. Uh, you know, Coach Zimmer, that's obviously his call. We've talked about it. That's the advantage of having the fifth game. So, uh, you know, I think we can get them the reps they need, uh, you know, and keep it pretty similar to what we've done in the past. How's he even looking at left tackle? Uh, he's he's uh, it's, a tough, it's a hard adjustment and just to throw him out there. Uh, but I, I thought he had two good days in a row. There was talk last year. I think he uh, has improved his strength, and when you improve your strength, you usually improve your that improves your quickness. I think he's playing lower uh, when he's pulling; he's doing a good job pulling, um, you know. And I, I think he's improved his technique uh, along with improving his strength. What was the thinking in moving him from guard to getting a little bit more tackle? In this game? Well, it's it's kind of a necessity when you when you're uh, practicing, and obviously. Uh, Carter, uh, you know, missed a couple of days. Uh, his knee swelled up a little bit. You put someone in there who it gives them an opportunity to go, and and um, I think uh, Yankee has made the most of that opportunity. He's a playmaker, you know, and it's you go out there and watch. He's he's made. Uh, a number of big plays. He has a lot of work to do. Uh, I was glad to see him say that in one of the interviews I saw. Uh, you know, just alignments, assignments, uh, details on routes. Uh, but those things you can coach. Uh, you can you can help him with those things. Sometimes you can coach all that stuff, and the guy still doesn't make plays. But uh, right now, uh, I, he's making plays, and and most of our receivers, when they've been given the opportunity, they're coming up with big plays. I thought uh, the other night when we practiced, uh, our guys got into it, and there was there was real good energy. I thought the crowd brought that out, and, and our guys being under the lights at night, I, I think you feel feel you feel faster. Uh, there is some rest during the day, so I'd expect the same thing tonight. Yeah, can you talk about Mike's relationship with his father? I mean, has he talked much about it at all? It's kind of important time for him. But what kind of relationship does Mike have with his father? Yeah, I. I that's not for I mean, I have a good feeling for that, but I'm not going to. You can ask him. As a group, how does this group of receivers stack up in terms of speed with some of the lanes that they have? Is this among the faster receiver groups you've had? Uh, I'm glad you made it very specific. I'm, I'm really, I have a hard time comparing players and comparing groups, but the one thing, uh, this this uh, group, we could I think we could put together a pretty good relay team with this group. They, they all run awfully well. How does that feel? Pardon me? How does Adam feel fit into that? Uh, Adam uh, is fast. He's got outstanding speed, and he plays extremely fast. Uh, and that's that's more important than to have an actual speed. Uh, he's he's really become an outstanding route runner, uh, and he runs uh, every route full speed. Uh, you know, so I, I would put him right in those with those guys in terms of being able to run. Speed? How do, you have to, how do you have to use it to make it effective? Yeah, you know, I mean, like I said, guys that play fast uh, and use their speed, that's a, that's a big deal. Uh, uh, but, you know, guys that, that are you know, put the whole thing together in terms of techniques and route running and tracking the ball. And I've had I've coached guys that had great, great speed but couldn't adjust to the ball. Uh, we had a uh, long time ago the Rams. Uh, in fact, he played in the – Hall of Fame game. He was a rookie when I coached in 1988 when I was an assistant there. He had great speed and would be running full speed, but when the ball was in the air, he could get another gear. 
And that's kind of you know what you're looking for in terms of guys who have the ability to use their speed. He could get another gear in. He could really track the ball. But there's a couple of guys who switch sides of the ball. Uh, Blake, uh, Ison, Fashion. What kind of thinking goes into the decision to switch people onto like the offensive side? Moving, moving a guy. You know, he, he's an outstanding athlete, and and uh, uh, I, I think Coach Zimmer felt that his best opportunity would be uh, to play on on offense when I was in San Diego. They did it before I got there, but obviously uh, Chris Dillman went from defensive tackle to offense and became a Pro Bowl guard. So guys are able to do it, and uh, you know he's got a long ways to go, but uh, he's had some some good moments. You know, I just think it, it's uh, certainly not by someone saying it. Uh, I think it's, it's by, you know, watching them go through an entire practice. And I, I really uh, put a lot of stock in how guys practice the last 15 minutes of practice as compared to the first 15 because, you know, I tell them, I mean, this game, it, more and more this game is being decided by the last four minutes in the game. You know, whatever the percentage, 70 percent of the games were decided by a touchdown or less. So in those last four minutes, the team that's the best condition, the team that can still play the fastest. Uh, I always tell our guys, uh, you know, they, we go out and do two minute and they, they go 12 straight plays. And, you know, at the end of it, we're down in the red zone and they're tired, but they're going to be tired in the game. So you have to find a way to go you know, run full speed uh, at the end of those situations. And that, that is about a lot about the mental toughness you're talking about. Time for two more. Last year, it seemed like you got some pretty good production from tight ends spread around different guys. Is that by design in your offense or simply a matter of necessity? Well, it really was. Uh, you know, I think uh, all, all of them caught over 20 balls or right around 20 balls. You know, I, I, you see some things where they say that, we didn't use them, or the production was down. We played a lot of different guys. Uh, that between them, they you know they caught 70 balls or something. Uh, you know, we've had two guys uh, at different times catch over 100. Uh, you know, we've it, this offense uh, all the way back to when I was with the Rams and Ernie obviously brought the Ernie Zambezi brought the offense from San Diego, and they had Winslow and. Uh, a guy named Pete Hollihan and uh, Eric Severs, and you know it's it's a multiple tight end offense, and uh, you know we use them, and there's there's things that uh, our guys obviously do ex extremely well, so I would expect them to be a big part of what we're doing. Last one. You end up spending any more time on defense tonight. Do you point as a factor? Me? Yeah. I'm I'm spend some time trying to get first downs and. Get some, throw some touchdown pass against them. No, I'm, I'm not gonna. Uh, we, we're, we're rolling pretty good, and uh, you know, Coach Zimmer's getting, getting this team, uh, like he tells you, the way he wants it, and he, he's creating an atmosphere for these guys uh, to really work hard and you know, uh, compete every day, and they're doing that. So, uh, you know, that, that's, uh, I wouldn't mess with that. Thanks.